Hello everybody. In this video we're talking about underwater photography using a compact camera and available light, no flash or strobe. Now we want to create a technically good image with proper exposure, not too bright or dark, and a clear image, something in focus, okay? In underwater photography we're often in low light and without a flash or strobe we need to understand and know how to control the exposure triangle, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Now I'm going to keep this very simple, uh, no math, just basic principles. If you already know this, I apologize, you can just skip it and move on to another video. All right? The ISO is a measure of your camera sensor's sensitivity to light. The sensor gathers light and transfers it to an image. A high ISO increases the sensitivity to, a, to light and allows us to capture an image in very low light, like underwater, okay? But there's a price to pay with a high ISO. We get grain or noise in our image, not good. Therefore, we always prefer to use the lowest ISO possible, all right? The shutter speed, second part of the exposure triangle, is how long our shutter stays open to allow light to reach our camera sensor. The slower the shutter speed, the more light we let in, which is good. But there's a cost, motion blur, our camera moving or the subject moving. So that's one reason we often like to keep our shutter speed somewhat fast, all right? The final part of the exposure triangle is aperture, how large the opening or hole is through which light enters to reach our camera sensor, all right? A large aperture allows a lot more light in, so we can get away with a quicker shutter speed and freeze motion or a lower ISO to minimize noise and grain. But there is a cost to a large aperture. With a large aperture, we limit our depth of field. The depth of field is our effective focus range, the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that, is, that appears sharp. Sometimes we want as much of the scene as possible to be in focus. Let's check out a few quick examples to see what I mean. I uh, set up a little toy plastic tiger on our dining room table and I wanted to get that pretty plant in the background as well. Use my point and shoot camera, kind of low lighting conditions to mimic a dive and available light. So here I took this shot with a small aperture because I wanted to have good depth of field. I wanted to keep that plant in focus in the background and I had a low ISO to maintain good image quality, not a lot of noise but the image is very, very blurred. Why? Because my shutter speed had to be too slow to get a good enough exposure, a one second shutter speed, speed. And even though I tried to hold my camera still and the tiger wasn't moving, a very blurred image from motion blur from my camera moving a little bit during the one second period that the shutter was open. So I set my shutter speed to 1 80th of a second to freeze the action and avoid motion blur kept my ISO low, but now my image is way too dark, not enough light. I increased my ISO, so now I can have a, a kind of a small aperture and a fast shutter speed, no motion blur, but if we zero in, if we magnify it here, this image is very grainy, a lot of noise, a poor quality image because the ISO is too high. So then I made my aperture open. I opened up my aperture to get better exposure. Now the image isn't too dark and I can have a low ISO, so no noise, but the background is extremely blurred. Now it's okay if you want the image to pop out, the subject to pop out and have a blurred background, but sometimes we want to get a clear background. So now I have very little depth of field. So these are just some examples of the issues we deal with with regard to the exposure triangle. So in underwater photography, with a compact camera and available light, we want to control our image. It's best not to set our camera to shoot in the auto mode and let it decide how to set the various exposure triangle settings. We might get an image with proper exposure, but it could be very blurred or grainy from improper shutter speed or ISO or aperture. It's best when we select these variables. The only problem, when we're underwater, we've got a lot of is other issues to contend with, and sometimes it can be confusing or even overwhelming to try to figure out how to set all these. So in subsequent videos, I'm going to talk about how to shoot in a mode called Aperture Pri Priority Mode, which I think is the easiest way to fairly, in a fairly simple method, to just uh, take control of our images. So let's check it out, and thanks very much for your attention.